in the keys, didn't you? Dude, that, that was awesome. Today, I'm in Lafouche Parish in southeastern Louisiana to do some hummingbird banding at a private residence with Eric Johnson. Eric is the director of bird conservation for Audubon, Louisiana, and is an experienced bird bander. At this location, we're looking to band a buff-bellied hummingbird, as well as several Rufus or Allen's hummingbirds that have also been around. Rufus versus Allen's hummingbird is one of the most technical and hardest bird IDs in North America, since juvenile birds look extremely similar. The best way to differentiate between the two is to look at the open tail feathers and to take the actual size measurements of the bird, which can only reliably be done with the bird in hand. In order to catch the hummingbirds, the homeowners have put out a cage around the feeder the day before in order to get them used to flying into it. Today, the cage is equipped with a trap door controlled by a car key fob. When the hummingbird is safely inside the cage, the lock button is pressed and the trap door closes. With everyone excited about the possibility of catching some of the neighborhood hummingbirds, I talked with Eric about the probability of catching one of our target species. The buff belly, um, they're very wary of cages and, and kind of new situations. How long does it normally take them? For, to catch? Yeah. Oh, it just totally depends. I mean, sometimes... Is that why you're sitting down? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I figure it might be here a little while. Oh, I hear There's some. in the uh, persimmon tree. Sounds like the buffy. I see it. It's, it's really loud. The yard proved to have a lot of bird activity, and it didn't take long for us to spot the noisy buff-bellied hummingbird, as well as many other territorial Rufus or Allen's hummingbirds. However, the yard also had a large flowering Turks cap plant that the hummingbirds were able to feed from, making them less likely to come to our caged feeder. We watched the hummingbirds chase each other and noted other species in the yard, but after an hour, no birds had entered the trap. So Eric, how confident are you that we're gonna get one today? At this point, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to hear. No, I mean, you just gotta be patient. It'll happen eventually. It's kind of like when you're fishing and all the fish are jumping, but you can't catch one. Right, you're using the wrong bait. <laughs> with the territorial hummingbirds chasing each other away from the cage feeder and with so much other food around, we decided to improvise and put up a mist net. A mist net is a nylon or polyester net set up between two poles. The mesh creates pockets that the birds fall into and get tangled in once they hit the net. So this birds don't really see the webbing though? Right. So if you're standing sort of on one side of it and you're looking at a tree or landing location, a bush, whatever, the, the net mostly disappears. Of course the wind will be a little counterproductive, but we'll see, you know, we're having success the other way, so. Yeah, Nothing gotta try else. all the options. The hummingbirds are, are really good at avoiding nets because they can stop on a dime in flight. And it's it's not uncommon for one to see like a bird just screaming up to the net, putting on the brakes, going straight up, over, and gone. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I have caught hummingbirds in nets, it happens, but they're just better at avoiding it than, than other birds. With so many other birds in the yard, it wasn't surprising that the first bird we caught was not, in fact, one of our target hummingbirds. They, lo they love chewing on your cuticles. <laughs> I'm gonna... Yeah. You gonna ban him? Sure. We banded and released the chickadee, and shortly after, we caught our first Rufus, or Allen's hummingbird, in the net. We almost got a twofer there. Yeah, that would've been nice. The other one hit and um, bounced off and just hit at the wrong end. At angle. least we got one. Yeah. Shortly after, we caught our second hummingbird in the net. This one's gonna be a little harder to figure out, because it's all got its juvenile feathers still. This is an interesting bird. I think it could be an Allen's? We'll, we'll see what the measurements say. Okay. It's not obviously a Rufus. 
right off the bat. It feels smaller than the other one. With the two hummingbirds in bags, we started getting the tiny equipment ready for the banding process. So how often do other people find the birds that you banded? I mean, it's not super often, but I mean, one of the most important things that we've learned from it is that they come back from year to year, um, often to the same sites. Um, but we also get dispersal, right? So we get birds that show up in other people's yards between years and abandoned a, a rufus in a yard in Lafayette two winters ago. And the following fall, it was recaptured in Tennessee. Oh, nice. So presumably on its way back to Louisiana from its breeding grounds yeah. in the Pacific Northwest. So, um, yeah, I mean, We've had birds banded in Louisiana that have showed up in Texas, in Alabama, in Florida. Um, so, starting, you know, bit by bit by bit, you eventually start to build um, sort of that migratory picture. We decided to start banding the two hummingbirds, which involves putting on the band and recording the band number, taking measurements, weighing the bird, looking at the fat content, aging, sexing, and in this case, identifying the birds to species. Given the tail pattern, I already know it's an immature male rufous <laughs> type, and the bill confirms that it's young. Based on the measurements and ID features, both birds turned out to be rufous hummingbirds. The rufous hummingbird is a small, buffy and green colored hummingbird of western North America. Females are much more drab in overall color and generally have more green. The rufous hummingbird makes an incredible migratory journey every year, forming a clockwise movement throughout western North America, traveling up the Pacific coast in winter and spring, and moving back down the Rocky Mountains in midsummer. They have the northernmost breeding range of any hummingbird, breeding as far north as southeastern Alaska. Nests are made up to 30 feet above the ground, and nests from several different rufous hummingbirds can sometimes be found in a single tree. Rufus hummingbirds have incredible memories and have been known to return to exact hummingbird feeder locations each year. They also feed on flowers and insects. After banding, the birds' heads are painted with a water-based paint so that the homeowners can recognize them. Over the course of the winter, the bird will molt, and so those, those crown feathers will, will, will drop off and the paint will eventually disappear. So by the, by the time this bird departs in the spring, the, that paint mark will be gone. But at least over the next probably even couple months, um, like I said, you know, Mike will be able to look through the binoculars and say, okay, well, this one is that specific bird. And um, I also maintain a, a database of winter hummingbirds, and I like to keep track of when they leave. And so if Mike is keeping out, you know, an eye out for the paint mark birds, he'll know exactly, you know, when they leave, and we can put that data. Probably sit there for a second. He's been pretty chill. Hey, there's one by the uh, feet by the key in the fire bush. Right? I see him, yeah. Went to the key. Did it go in? It went by the entrance. I don't think it went all the way in. <laughs> <laughs> After the hummingbirds, we also caught a few other species in our net. These things are not nice. We don't give them the typical aluminum band that we give other birds, so they take a special stainless steel band that's a much harder metal. So they can't actually crush it around their leg or tear off the band. Um, it looks just kind of like the other bands, but is a uh, different material. Dude, that is so cool. Very nice. He's actively molting right there. We sat back down to watch the cage, and I saw a larger hummingbird get trapped in the net. We thought it could be our target buff-bellied hummingbird. Is it? Yeah. Nice! This is probably a first-year bird, and it'll be really hard to determine sex. It's almost, almost impossible. Um, we got the target bird. The buff-bellied hummingbird is a green-backed bird with a black-tipped, red bill, rufous tail, and light-colored stomach. Males have an iridescent green throat. Their range extends from northeastern Central America along the coast, where they reach some southern states along the Gulf of Mexico during their non-breeding season. 
The buff-bellied hummingbird feeds on flower nectar, small insects, and can readily be found at hummingbird feeders. Nesting occurs from around April to August, and nests are usually built only a few feet above the ground, normally composed of plant material and spider webs. It's got to be an immature that the, the chest, the, you know, this is still all old body plumage, probably juvenile because it's like buffy tipped and it doesn't have like a nice solid gorget patch. So, and then the fork and the tail is really shallow. It may even be a young female. Um, it's just a, it's just a pretty drab bird. Remarkably, right? Like this is a drab bird. Right. Just imagine what a nice one looks like. <laughs> um, so as the season goes on, they'll change and go yeah. better. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this one would stick around. It may look different when it leaves. Than right. It does now. It'll definitely get brighter as it replaces this body plumage. You can kind of see here the back is new and the and the rump is right. old. And that's just much that more electric. We processed and released the buff-bellied hummingbird and had one more surprise to end the day. Dude, that was awesome. Did you get it? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Can you tell what it was? But I think it's the female rufus. With rain now coming down, and most of the hummingbirds in the yard banded, we decided to pack up our equipment and call it a day. Hummingbirds are feisty and adorable animals that are always a joy to watch. Getting to experience looking at so many different birds in one yard, and being able to see them up close was an experience I won't soon forget. All in all, we caught, banded, and released three Rufus hummingbirds and one buff-bellied hummingbird, along with the additional Carolina chickadee, Inca dove, and northern cardinal. Hopefully the banding data we collected will help researchers learn more about the movement of birds and specifically hummingbird migration in the future. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. I don't mind catching other birds. I can, yeah, but it's just going <laughs> to be distracting. Be constantly up and down. Yeah. I'm down to catch other birds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll band all the birds in your yard. That sounds well, awesome. She's been molting for a while. Good job, little buddy. Yeah. <laughs> 4.2 grams. <laughs> so you would need about 110 of them to make a pound. <laughs> what a goober. It's one of them you can mail with a postage thing. <laughs> <laughs>